All right, Professor Klein back here in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University today to talk to you about the skull. So first off, we know the skull sits atop the body, but we actually want to note that it is articulating with vertebrae C1. This is the atlas, atlas. And if we look right in here, we can see the occipital condyles on either side of the skull articulating with the superior articulating facet of C1. Now if I even pull back the skull into its right position, notice how that forms a joint between those two things. But let me take the skull off, bring it on down, and we can start to go through every piece of the anatomy. So first off, up here we've got the frontal bone. Frontal bone. But specifically we want to know the supraorbital margin. That's kind of the margin right here as you get to the orbit of the eye. So supraorbital margin with the supraorbital notch. See that little hole right there? It's one on this side too. That's the superorbital notch, aka superorbital foramen. Now if I were to pull off, let's go over here, pull off the skull cap, also called calviera. This space here would be called the anterior cranial fossa. This is where the anterior part of the brain is going to sit. I just happen to have a brain right here, so I'm going to put it on in just so you can see. Wow, that's that frontal lobe of the brain sitting within the anterior cranial fossa. Keeping it going, we can see the parietal bones either side. There's two parietal bones separated by the sagittal suture. Sagittal suture right here. Also note the frontal or coronal suture traveling across. And all the way back we can see the lambdoid suture. Let's tilt it up here for you. There you can see that lambdoid suture going all the way across. Differentiate the parietal from, whoops, from the occipital bone, this most posterior bone of the skull. From the occipital bone, we've got a few things. I already mentioned the occipital condyles, but here they are again either side and they are on the lateral sides of this giant hole called the foramen magnum. This is the foramen magnum. Let's look in there. If we pull the play, we can see that goes into the skull itself. That's where the spinal cord would travel. Spinal cord would travel there up to the brain. We also have the external occipital protuberance, which is this bump right here. Go ahead and feel this bump in the back of your head. A little bit tougher to see, but if I put some animations on here, you can see the superior nuchal line and the inferior nuchal line. So inferior or superior up here on either side of the protuberance, inferior nuchal line. You can see that one a little bit more better a little bit better down here on the skull. Turning it to the side, now we've got the temporal bone, temporal bone. This skull with the red and the blue and the green, it's got muscle origins and insertions on it. Over here, we don't have those, but we can see the same thing, the temporal bone, as it leads out to that mastoid process. So this is the mastoid process right here. Let me give you a full 360 of it. That's the mastoid process. You also know, note the styloid process. This long, very narrow 
bony landmark coming off of the temporal bone. What's that hole you ask? That's the external acoustic meatus. External acoustic meatus, it's the canal or the meatus that travels through to the temporal lobe of the brain dealing with hearing. So imagine your ears right about here and that vestibulocochlear nerve traveling through here. Let's keep going. And let's take an inside view because we want to track out that acoustic meatus. Now it's the internal acoustic meatus right here. So notice this would be the hole coming from the outside. So external is coming in and then this is the internal acoustic meatus. We said this was the foramen magnum. But notice there's another one right next to it. And let me stick my probe all the way through so you can see where this one comes out. Down here. That's the jugular foramen. Jugular foramen. There's one on both sides. Both sides laterally from the foramen magnum jugular foramen. If we look here though, this entire area is your middle cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa. That's where the middle part of the or brain would sit. And just to fill it in, this is the posterior cranial fossa, the part of the skull that's smooth for the posterior lobe of the brain to sit. Up in here though, if we outline this bone, that is your sphenoid bone, sphenoid bone. All right, so zooming in from this view, we can see the lesser wings, lesser wing, and the greater wing, greater wings of the sphenoid bone. Now it doesn't look, really look like wings right here, but let's go over to this skull and we can see the lesser wings and the greater wings much larger now underneath or inferior to the lesser wings. We also have something called the cella tertica Cella tertica is this part in the bone. Bonus question for you. What sits or is protected within the cella tertica bone? You tell me what structure in the body sits within this cella tertica. I'll tell you the answer at the end. Next up, as we come out here, this becomes the ethmoid bone ethmoid bone, just this little part right here on either side. It's the cribriform plate, cribriform plate. Now in the middle is something called the Christi Golly. Christi Golly, let me show that to you right there. That's that kind of hard form part because actually the cribriform plate, you should be able to go through it. So imagine something like this pipe cleaner being able to travel through that cribriform plate down through the nasal cavity. Back to a lateral view, we can see the zygomatic bone right here, zygomatic bone. Let's bring this one out as well because this one really shows clearly the divisions between zygomatic and frontal, zygomatic and temporal, and zygomatic and the maxilla. So come out here, this is the maxilla. Let's go back to this skull. The cheekbones, more so the medial cheekbone is the maxilla, but zygomatic is out here. 
nasal bone. Looking within the orbit of the eye, you've got the lacrimal bone, lacrimal ethmoid, and then this is all sphenoid back in here. So the orbit of the eye is a little bit different than the other view for those same bones. Let's look at this skull. And here you can see a hole where the lacrimal sac would produce tears. So you got the lacrimal bone, which has the lacrimal sac producing tears to the eye. So that's where your tears would come out of. Ethmoid, you can start to see that back in here. And then again, sphenoid, this most posterior area in the orbit of the eye. Looking in the nasal cavity, we can see a few things. First off, just the, the inferior 50% of this skinny narrow bone in the middle is called the vomer. So this is the vomer. The top 50% is called the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. You can also see the middle and inferior concha. Middle and inferior concha. Where's the superior? Well, it's hidden more superiorly up there. You can't really see the superior one, but you can see the middle and the inferior concha. A couple other things to take notice of is all the way from here to here, is the zygomatic arch. This zygomatic arch includes part of the zygomatic bone and part of the temporal bone. But do notice where it splits right here. Now, in your lab, there's a good picture, but I'm gonna tell you, uh, this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Just what I'm indicating, this space right here, this bony landmark right here. From here to here is what's called the zygomatic process, zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Make sure you know the difference between those two. And we can't forget about the mandible, aka the jaw, but definitely call it the mandible. The mandible goes all the way around, tucks up and underneath a lot of these areas and we've got the mandibular angle right here the head of the mandible the mandibular ramus this is the ramus part right here mental frame in this is the mental region of the body, but it's the mandible bone, but this is the mental foramen. The mandibular body is this whole part out here with the mental protuberance, the part of the jaw that sticks most anteriorly, mental protuberance. If I bring it over here, I lean it on its side. This is your temporal mandibular, oops, temporal mandibular joint, your TMJ joint. Now when this is in the socket, it's good, but it can also come out and cause a lot of pain. So what's that fossa called in there? That's the mandibular fossa. Mandibular fossa, where the bone keeps wanting to go. Mandibular fossa, right there. Move the bone on over. There it goes, it sits right within that fossa. External acoustic meatus. Styloid process. Mastoid process. external occipital protuberance, occipital condyles, 
Raymond Magnum. So before I said what sits within the cella tertica, the answer is the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland or the hypophysis. Same structure, two different names.